In the UK on the 6th of July 2008, the BBC aired a documentary titled The Conspiracy Files 9-11 The Third Tower. At a little under seven years since the attacks of September 11, 2001, this program attempts to solve what the BBC considers to be the final mystery of 9-11, the reason for the collapse of World Trade Center 7, a building that was part of the World Trade Center complex, but however was not hit by a plane. Despite the implied unbiasedness of the documentary makers, it is obvious that the BBC would never air a show that tries to tell the viewer that the official story is incorrect, or at the very least that it is dubious. This means that while presenting actual evidence relating to World Trade Center 7's collapse, the creators would have to eventually push the official story as the only possible explanation. I'd like to present one instance where the BBC have manipulated evidence in favour of their argument to promote the official story that fire and structural damage caused by falling debris from World Trade Center 1 and 2 weakened World Trade Center 7, allowing it to collapse under its own weight. And the owner, Larry Silverstein, has also been accused of being part of a huge conspiracy to destroy the buildings. It all stems from a TV interview when he used the phrase, pull it. I remember getting a call from the uh, fire department commander telling me that they were not sure they were going to be able to contain the fire. And I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull. I ask every viewer to come to their own conclusion about the language Larry's using and the emphasis. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. My personal response to his comment is that he was uh, involved in a decision to, to uh, bring the building down, but uh, who knows? The documentary is pretending to be unbiased by showing Larry Silverstein's potentially damning confession of his involvement in the demolition of World Trade Center 7. However, it purposefully omits one key line from the original footage. Here is the entire clip. I remember getting a call from the uh, fire department commander telling me that they were not sure they were going to be able to contain the fire. And I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull, and then we watched the building collapse. Notice how the last line from Silverstein reaffirms that when he said pull it, he is referring to the building and not the firefighters or rescue workers. However, the BBC chose to remove this short remark twice, as it does not support the official story. It is very important to hear that he says, and they made that decision to pull, and then we watched the building collapse. From this wording he has made a direct connection between the word pull and the collapse of the building, as if one directly affected the other. However, the BBC chose to ignore this as it does not validate their argument that Silverstein meant pull the firefighters out. I welcome others to point out the manipulations involved in this BBC documentary. Blast, shoot, blow and pull are terms used in the demolition industry to refer to bringing down buildings, bridges, and other structures. Because I actually blew the hospital down that I was born in. Uh, originally, we had figured to shoot it, let it drop straight down. Then, watch demolition dynamics attempt a big blast. And from Ground Zero's own post-disaster wrecking crew. By mid-December, the Department of Design and Construction had leveled World Trade Center buildings for and five. Hello? Oh, we're getting ready to pull building six. Some damage to building seven is said to have been caused by debris from tower one. Though this New York Times article tells us building seven burned like a giant torch, the only visuals that exist are of unidentified smoke and a few small fires. Compare this to the wallop sustained by World Trade Center 3, 4, 5, and 6. Positioned right below the towers, damage to the surrounding World Trade Center buildings was infinitely worse. Still, the structures held up. But somehow, rescue workers knew that Building 7 would fall. 
you hear that? Keep your eye on that building. It'll be coming down soon. A 47-story skyscraper, Building 7 folded neatly in six and a half seconds. A textbook descent right into its footprint. Silverstein Properties now tells us that its owner was referring to the team of firefighters inside the building when he spoke of the decision to pull, pulling the firemen out of harm's way. However, there were no firefighters in Building 7, according to FEMA, NIST, and Fire Chief Frank Fellini. They were ordered out at 11.30 that morning. Six hours later, the building came down. You know, we heard this, this sound that sounded like a clap of thunder. Turned around, it looked like there was um, a shock wave ripping through the building, and the windows all busted out, and, you know, it was, it was horrifying. About a second later, the bottom floor caves out, and uh, the building followed after that. I'd be happy to take a look at it. Also, a question I have for you. Um, World Trade Center 7 was brought down um, on September 11th at 5.20 in the, in the evening. Uh, the leaseholder of the World Trade Center complex, Larry Silverstein, gave a uh, public interview on PBS in 2002, and he said that they pulled that building, which is a demolition term for intentionally bringing down a building. This man made over $5 billion from those buildings' destruction, and I want to know if there was ever a formal investigation into Larry Silverstein, the leaseholder of the World Trade Center complex, and his ties to this entire event. I don't believe there's been a formal investigation. I haven't heard that. I don't know that. I do know that uh, they, that, that wall, I remember, was, was in danger, and I think that they made a decision based on the danger that it had of destroying other things, that they did it in a controlled fashion. Uh, There's an old saying in Tennessee, I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee, that says, fool me once, shame on, shame on you. <laughs> if fool me, we can't get fooled again. 